first of all, I think that the main challenges are going to be centered around many of the, the, the really the, the changes that we've seen over the last year or so that we would have normally maybe seen over the last 10 years. So what has happened is that we've had a massive acceleration of digitization of the events industry. And I think that that trend is going to continue and move even faster in 2021. In addition to that, I think that the main challenges associated with that is that for now, for organizers, like especially commercial organizers, anybody with a Zoom account is a competitor. Anybody can organize a experience and start sharing content and try and build a community. So for organizers, it is more important than ever to be in tune with their communities, continuously strive to bring people together and actively look on what opportunities and, and ways they can improve that and differentiate themselves to build a long-term sustainable brand in the communities that they serve. This is a great question and there are so many ways that technology is going to have an impact on the way that revenue can be generated from events and from, from the communities that it serves. So I think some of the most interesting ones are centered around uh, kind of facilitated meetings and, and so-called hosted buyer programs in which you have buyers and suppliers that have a need to come together. And there are so many opportunities for finding ways of on both sides of the aisle, on both buyer and the supplier side to monetize this. Uh, buyers have a need to instantly connect and engage with people and, and, and effectively uh, uh, meet a lot of the suppliers in the market. While on the supplier side, there is always a desire to have better and, and higher quality leads being available to a company at an instant notice. Other opportunities around revenue streams related to technology would be centered around content and how this can be monetized, but also insights and what can be learned from the analytics that come from both virtual, hybrid, and in-person events. The main thing for figuring out who to work with is not just looking at where they are today, but what their plans for the future are and whether their plans and vision for the future aligns with you as an organizer. I think many organizers are looking at a big spreadsheet with columns of do they take all the features? And yes, that is an important exercise to do. But beyond that, get a feel for if this company aligns with the vision that you have for the future of your events. In addition to that, the user experience is key. More features is definitely not always better. Try to find experiences and platforms that are not just focused on ticking boxes in terms of features, but try to optimize the experiences that they offer and try to create effective and well thought through experiences that result in value for event participants. So using different event concepts and different features to work together towards that particular goals that you have for your community, that's really what, what an evaluation should consider beyond just a typical feature review. So I look at hybrid in two ways. One is a concurrent hybrid event where you simultaneously have people participating virtually and in person. And I think that model has several specific opportunities and also challenges associated with it. On the challenges side, I think first of all, there is a resource constraint. Organizing a virtual event takes time while organizing an in-person event also takes time. So doing it both simultaneously is gonna require more people and, and more oversight and more planning to do properly. However, it is a great way, for example, for if you have amazing content to people engage with in real time. Hybrid experiences that are concurrent have been around for ages, uh, football, uh, but also Apple's keynotes and many other ways that content has been both participated and engaged with live in a convention center while also being streamed to millions of people across the globe. And I think that that has a unique uh, uh, opportunity with the reach that it has. There are so many more people that you could engage in this way, that the reach that we've seen for virtual events 
has been astronomical compared to what you've previously seen for uh, just in-person events. And I think that's a really exciting opportunity for organizers to grow their audience and draw in more people and therefore also charge more for sponsorships and, and other uh, monetization opportunities. Separate from that, hybrid events can also be done um, async. So basically having, for example, an in-person event uh, this week while having a virtual event uh, the week before maybe or the week after. Now, again, there is kind of specific challenges and opportunities to that. If the virtual event happens before the in-person event, this is very interesting from a return on time perspective. For example, normally you show up at an in-person event and those are sometimes the first interactions that you have with someone. So you don't really know if that meeting of 15 or 30 minutes is going to be worth it. You can pre-plan and look through all the people if you use an event matchmaking platform like Grip, but still the, the first interaction that you have with this person is going to be at the live event. If you put a virtual event before this leading up to the event, or maybe even multiple ones over a, let's say a three month period, what can really happen is for people to connect with each other and have short meetings leading up to the event. Let's say I might have 30 meetings in the, in the three months leading up to the in-person event, figure out the five people that I absolutely should meet with, and then have a longer, more productive meeting when I actually show up in person. So this is a way to further increase the return on time from in-person events by having already qualified the people that I'm gonna be speaking to. It also means that I have a better idea if the in-person event is going to be worth it for me. And this is simultaneously therefore also a challenge with this. It might result that if somebody is unable or uh, doesn't find the right connections in the virtual events leading up to the event, they might be less, uh, less inclined to attend the in-person event as a result of that. And so therefore delivering quality connections and engagements leading up to any experience and as part of any experience will be crucial just as it like it was before but the pandemic, that trend is going to continue after the pandemic has finished and far into the future. We also see some organizers that are trying to organize virtual events after the in-person event as a follow-up. And this is definitely also a great opportunity, although I think that there are some unique challenges with this as well, resulting in, for example, people maybe being less inclined after the in-person event um, and therefore already having made their connections. But as a follow-up setup, it could be very interesting. For example, you could create specific experiences for niche audiences within your event that could then have a three, four hours uh, kind of time frame in which they could have more meetings with the people that they didn't manage to speak to. Um, we've been around for five to six years now. We've been doing over 2000 events pre-pandemic and over 500 virtual events in the last year alone. And I think we've learned a lot about how matchmaking and how bringing people together works. And I think that's one of our biggest USPs. We've got the most advanced AI powered matchmaking engine measured by the quality of the connections that it's able to establish, the number of meetings that people have thanks to our platform both in in-person and now in virtual events. So we continue to be a leader in driving leads for exhibitors, providing a high return on time in terms of the meetings and experiences that people have at those events. And in addition to that, we've got an incredible customer success and project management team that make sure that every event runs smoothly. And I think the best way of describing it is like 12 out of 20 of the largest trade show organizers in the world uh, we're fortunate enough to work with, uh, which is a huge uh, privilege um, and also has been daunting in, in 2020. Uh, but it's super exciting to work with so many leading organizers across the world. And of course, we're very excited about showing you more about the grid platform as well.